once again, welcome to our meetup. And Dewey, I'll hand it over to you. Sure. So uh, as we discussed about, you know, the topic of today on the behavioral agility, I will start with a small introduction and then uh, an icebreaker. I'm Zui Kudav. I'm the transformation lead, uh, mainly impacting the mindset, behavioral transformation, and also the delivery way of working transformation. I have in 22 years of experience, mainly in delivery program management, but for last many years now, I have been into the transformation space for agile, uh, enterprise agile transformations, and also uh, mainly the leadership transformations for my teams and customers. So uh, as a part of this, uh, you know, I have been uh, uh, really engaging on behavioral agility a lot and wanted to share my experiences today. Uh, it's more of an experience sharing session and uh, not a training or mentoring session. So please feel free to share your perspectives also today because we learn from each other and uh, we, 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 ha we can have different perspectives and it's a good idea to challenge each other also. So I will invite uh, that perspectives also to you know learn more and participants can get more from this session that way. So to quickly start, you know, there is a small uh, icebreaker for all of you. I wanted to just, uh, you know, ask you a question. Uh, does anyone of you know the meaning of the word Saubona? Uh, you can unmute yourself and speak up. Did you hear this word any time? No, not yet. Okay, any any wild guesses? The clue is in the slide. In the text which you are able to still see. So that's the clue. Okay, so Saubona, uh, again, just for the people who didn't hear me, uh, the clue is still on the slide. It is, if you can read any of the text on the current slide, you will find the clue. Any words which are you are seeing. One it's of the word is the meaning of that. Yes. Who said this? Aditi. Aditi. Yeah, great. Yes, Saubona is a greeting, but uh, maybe another question. Do you know which community or... Uh, which language this greeting is about? Anyone? Any wild guess from the word, the way it is written or spelt? That's okay. I will not stretch it too far. Basically, Saubona is a greeting in the Zulu tribe. Now, you know, why am I going back to the tribe days and why I, got, why I am going back to the tribals? You know, you all know we have this concept of tribes and squads in Spotify way of working. Uh, yes, it has nothing to do with this word, but you know what I'm trying to bring you to is the, the word tribe or the concept of tribe or the behavioral agility we have in tribe is not a new uh, way of life or way of working, which has been, you know, just uh, evangelized by a Spotify or the software industry. They don't claim this. The, the real claim of autonomy, the real claim of building a trust environment goes back to our tribal uh, learn, you know, living and our tribes are most authentic, uh, had the most authentic way of living. And if you see, you know, in the Zulu tribe, the word Saubona literally means that I see you, you are important to me and I value you. Now, tell me one, you know, one uh, urban language or one urban greeting where you can incorporate so much of meaning in just one level of greeting, right? Uh, so if you look at our old ways of working they had a lot of authenticity and uh, while this why i am using this zulu tribe greeting to greet you today is because we are going to talk about vulnerability we are going to talk about transparency and how we see each other you know it is a way to make the other person feel safe feel visible and uh, we, to accept them as they are with all the virtues nuances and flaws now if i'm going to really tell this to you and if you tell this to your teams See the amount of, uh, you know, uh, trust you develop within the first few minutes of meeting each other. And if a tribal as, you know, they are may not be educated enough, but they understand to the core that what it means to accept each other with all their virtues, nuances. And that's why they use the word Saubona. And it really, you know, this, uh, this part really 
you know had a very deep impact on me in which i realized that we have been as human values if it is in our tribal communities it means they have been in our genes from a long time but we have somehow forgotten it in the long run and it's time to bring that back and that's that is where the behavioral agility is going to start you know getting built in our teams if we start giving that context to our teams in the first meet up only right so this is how you know i wanted to just bring you to the topic i i hope uh, this sounds interesting for you to for me to continue and you want to hear more yes 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 yeah okay thank you so much so uh, you know moving ahead now of course again this is a very interactive discussion i would not call it as a you know Uh, which i am sharing something and you are listening it's more that we are going to uh, talk to each other on this topics and uh, as a peep into this topic uh, you know i want you all to share your first thoughts on what kind of image person or perception you know comes to your mind when you see these words you know courage vulnerability trust these are day to day english words but what is it you know what do you relate it with and this could be very personal experiences you know everyone can have a different view it could be about a person it could be about a situation so i i, I am really interested to know what you feel about these words and what are your experience you can share or a image or a person or a personality which comes to your mind so we can we can go around the room and you know you can share yeah i can share uh, joy just tell your name also because somehow i am since, since i am presenting i am not able to see you let me also see the camera sure. yeah so my name is uh, sri nagesh i am uh, from okay. hyderabad hyderabad sure and currently working as enterprise agile coach sure sri nagesh so, so every time i look at the the very key important words like courage vulnerability trust let me take courage so as part of the while working with the teams uh, in the agile transformations i think the team members uh, have an exemplary they have demonstrated the courage however junior they are whenever uh, they interact with the very senior client leaders uh, you know they have courage to ask questions get clarifications okay. you know they will not just keep quiet and uh, agree the what uh, you know the confusion is all about so they have a courage to ask questions Uh, to get the some kind of Fantastic. solution answers yeah so when you hear the word courage your team members come to your mind thanks srinagesh anyone else wants to take a stab at these words hey uh, this is kartik here yes yeah i yes, would uh, yeah just want to give my perception here right um as uh, these words resonate to me very well because i'm also in the space of enterprise agile coaching right um but what i would say is not going into the coaching now but just to kind of give you my perception uh what i see is in the workplace right uh the zen zen x zen y zen c mm -hmm. um those people um, beat uh, you know uh, whatever wherever they come from across um, um, uh, across different regions i see uh, this is this is something which i could really see from them uh where they they are really courageous in the way they kind of uh, you know carry themselves and the questions that they ask the right questions they ask and and um, and the people who are silent are mostly are millennials and and you know people who are um you know um you know kind of um, very old age people or senior yeah. people right uh, mm -hmm. where the in real interaction comes is from the zen x zen y zen c i really see this is a really lot to do with the culture Ex and exactly. also the, the generation upbringing. gap yeah the generation gap and how we see things are completely different and how they see things are completely different and yes. also they have that um, you know i would say they practice a lot of leadership skills without knowing that they are doing that I, that's what i would say right i agree Currently, and it also being a lot of education system have been changing in india so a lot of learning coming the exposure from that side. yeah the exposure also counts and also the way they have been brought up and the, the stories they hear when they when they have been brought up and, yeah. and also the society everything adds here uh, because yeah. it's they cannot just take the credit alone but it, it, they have been brought up the environment uh, by, plays a role True. yes thanks so, karthik yeah which i see uh, is 
some sometimes we really make it hard to read and, and understand the leadership the emotional intelligence the empathy the self awareness which i think they are demonstrating um, very easily <laughs> easily i i agree with you perfect yeah. perfectly put thanks kartik and even else quickly you know anything which you especially you know want to look at vulnerability and trust and also apart from perception or your professional life have, how do you experience it with an image a person uh, you know because we know now we have heard about uh, the teams and uh, the conversations within the industry but how about you know what does it mean to be vulnerable trust uh, build trust for you for someone else you know who have not spoken anyone wants to take a stab okay sure we will come back to this uh, it's not like we are no, you know we are going to stop at this uh, part there is a lot about this conversation so keep with keep up with me and what i'm going to do is uh, till the time you know you gather your thoughts i'm also going to uh, you know uh, stop sharing my screen and again reshare it because i want to show you a video which is which is a very interesting video uh, you know uh, and uh, i have to kind of juggle for sharing it back with you uh, so just bear with me for that so i'm i'm just uh, going to share it again and i may not be able to speak with you but uh, please watch this video and we will do the debriefing of this video once we have completely seen it okay it's a short video and please enjoy the video for next couple of minutes okay so i'm going to again share my screen so i think the biggest myth about vulnerability is that it's weakness i think a lot of people were raised to believe that it was modeled i think certainly in our culture um we see that a lot that to be vulnerable to be open to be exposed is to be weak um and the truth is you know what i found in my research is that vulnerability is not weakness in fact i would argue that it's our greatest measure of courage when we went out and asked people what is vulnerability we heard things like vulnerability is the first date after my divorce vulnerability is starting my own company vulnerability is taking responsibility for something that went wrong at work vulnerability is sitting with my wife who has stage 3 breast cancer and making plans for our young kids um vulnerability is taking my business public you know the definition i use in my work of vulnerability is simply uncertainty risk and emotional exposure vulnerability is about the willingness to show up and to be seen even when there are no guarantees and it's interesting to me i mean one of the things that i thought was really interesting i gave a talk um it's probably a couple of years now and it yeah. was being translated by people doing american sign language and they came up before the talk started and they said are there any words that you're going to use a lot in your talk that we should you know know about that are might be different and i said well i use the word vulnerability a lot and they kind of there were two of them and they kind of looked at each other and they said oh we do, we do this for vulnerability and i said what does that mean and they said it means weak in the knees and i'm like wow that's not how i talk about vulnerability and she said well there's only one other sign for vulnerability and i said what is it and she said and i said oh that's what i'm talking about and so to me vulnerability is our most accurate measure of courage i mean it's pretty powerful when i have 13000 pieces of data collected over 12 years that i cannot find a single incident or story of courage that was not completely underpinned by vulnerability i think the problem arises that it's there's so many little little paradoxes with vulnerability and one of them is that vulnerability is courage in you but weakness in me when i meet you it's the first thing i look for in you but it's the last thing i want to show you in me and so i think to really put ourselves out there knowing that if we do that enough we're going to fail i just don't think it gets more courageous than that Hi I hope you were able to listen to the uh, YouTube video right 
Yes. Yes. Okay. And I'm back, going to be back to my screen. Uh, and I wanted to really listen about, you know, what did you find in the video? What were your, you know, uh, what were your takeaways? And uh, how many of you know Brené and her work on this topic? Or at least what she told about, you know, that part. Uh, what, what are your views on that? What did you think when you saw the video? Uh, hi, uh, this is uh, Olawale. And uh, I think he actually gave me a new perspective to vulnerability. He's not seen it as a weakness, but seen it as an opportunity to actually explore. And uh, whether you fail or not, it's always good to at least know you actually did your best and you tried. So it's a new perspective and a new learning for me. Fantastic. Uh, I really like the way you put it as a, you know, a different perspective to vulnerability. And that's one of the most, uh, you know, uh, reactions I always get when I, when I share this video with someone. Thank you for bringing that. Any other thoughts? What did she see, say about, you know, the sign language or did you notice what she said? That's the first thing in, you know, I, I want to see in you, but that's the last thing I want to see. Uh, you see in me so that's a very impactful statement right on vulnerability because we are open for others to be vulnerable to us but how much we are open or courageous it's it's like uh, two sides of the same coin you know most of the time uh, we use them as antonyms in our especially in the indian uh, cultural context you know uh, and as rightly put earlier by karthik the millennials versus the gen z and those people uh, they don't find you know the millennials like the people who have been raised in a, a culture where respect was not speaking up respect was more you know allowing the hierarchical model to operate courage uh, you know and vulnerability were opposites of the same coin but now with the gen z when they are speaking up they know they are vulnerable they they could fail but they show that show up that courage so they are using it as a synonym there are two sides of the same coin so any yeah, more thoughts? May, yeah, if I may add uh, um, to this, right? Uh, I think this is also related to uh, equity, equality, equity, because um, as you were saying, I just I, this this thought rings in my uh, mind. A bell rings in my mind, saying that when a person is expecting the other person to to be vulnerable, and mm -hmm. which he, that person feels it's completely okay, but um, but we are not ready to be vulnerable. We are keeping ourselves, uh, you know, maybe um, we feel that that's a weakness, a sign of weakness for us. Or we, maybe we, we feel that uh, we are superior to others and we don't, we want to pretend as if we, we don't have any weakness. Right? Absolutely. Uh, I've seen people who uh, would, would want to cry, but they don't want to show up crying to others. Right, and uh, they pacify others, but this guy, this person will not cry, and they see that that's it's it's all related to the culture. I mean, I'm trying Correct. again back to the culture, and and that's how people think, right? Many many places we feel that we should not be saying I don't know, and that was a kind of a sin <laughs> when you say you don't know. Exactly, that was, that was considered as a sin. Yeah, true. That's not considered as a courage. Courage is always about being, you know, right, being positive, being showing uh, not your true emotion, but keeping up to the situation and being supportive to others who can be weak. But you yourself cannot go there. That is what and exactly what she said by the last words, what she mentioned. So it's the last thing in yourself that you want to show to others. So thanks. Thanks for that discussion. It really, you know, means a lot. Uh, any more thoughts or we can go ahead. Sure. So like, you know, uh, to put things in perspective about, you know, these three and uh, di we discussed a lot about courage and vulnerability, but then I also want to throw up and, you know, uh, question to all of you. Why has, why is trust figuring here? What's the role of trust with these two words? We could, uh, you know, have the connection established between the courage and vulnerability by what, you know, we saw what we discussed, but how does trust fit into the game? Any thoughts on that?
why why have would i would put a, something like a trust in this discussion of courage and vulnerability what's the role of trust yeah if i may add again if no one has mm -hmm. anything to offer <laughs> so trust is uh, again uh, this three dimensions that you said now right trust courage and vulnerability and and trust is the foundation for any relationship right be it at personal right. or professional and uh, even if you take in a team setting though there are a lot of things that are transactional right but without trust those transactional things will never <laughs> never fly right Correct. you you are in a way where uh, you get into a mode in in obvious there is always a consideration i give this you you give me this in return right Correct. it always a consideration uh, but but beyond that if you look at beyond transactional the underlying factor that is hidden not tangible not visible to anyone is trust correct right and and people many many of the times including me we forget and, and we get into the transactional way but uh, it doesn't uh, sustain I, i i have seen those relationship doesn't sustain correct yeah. and most importantly you know the connection is Uh, you know even between these three words you know the bridge is vulnerability whether you talk courage courage is on one side and trust is on the other the trust is the start point as you rightly pointed out we will not be bold enough or we we'll, cannot take a decision or be courageous enough to share our vulnerabilities unless we see an op opportunity to build trust or the trust is already built when we know that the vulnerability we share will not be taken an advantage of so it could be a very intimate situation it could be a personal or a professional situation and uh, if you see you know you try to coach a team which is you know completely not able to speak up for a long time and the customer you know the uh, you know the customer is actually escalating that why doesn't the team speak up enough and then you try to coach the team but you see that you know it's not adding value why because the problem is not with the team the problem is with the environment if you know i always gave this give this metaphor that if the plant is not blooming you don't actually remove the plant from the pot you actually change the environment of the plant you see if it is having right sunlight or if it is having the right you know uh, nurturing uh, the water content which it requires or the right amount of manure which it requires so it is all the environment and the ecosystem which is going to play a role whether your team is going to speak up they will have that courage to say no or to say something which they don't know the vulnerable to expose themselves to someone who is not trustworthy they will not actually do that so uh, when the environment is not trustworthy vulnerability cannot be ex uh, you know shared because of two reasons that they could be judged or they could be taken advantage of so trust is an underlying principle as you rightly said kartik to build a level where you can have that courage to share your vulnerability so how that is how these three gets linked and that's how you know they actually contribute towards your behavioral agility they go hand in hand and if you understand this you know cornerstones for yourself for your leaders and for your team then you are on the right track towards building the right behavioral agility for all your ecosystem okay so you know as i as i have to be surely uh, you know i we are talking about vulnerability and uh, it's not the last thing i want to show you but the first thing i want to show you before you show me your vulnerability so this is a personal journey an example a story which i would like to share about myself because if i want to ask you about your stories of vulnerability and courage it's my responsibility to speak up for myself first so you know this is a short uh, example or a story which i wanted to tell you about my days when i was uh, not very old in the industry but not very new also i was like a project lead in the good old days you know with a 7 8 year 6 6 years of experience and with a very young kid you know my elder son is now uh, in 12th grade but when he was too young he was uh, just one or two year old and uh, this was a time when i was in a very demanding program and uh, there was a certain amount of fire fighting which was required and as you know the good old days you know you have star performers and you want always those star performers to uh, come and do the fire fighting and then pick up the pieces of the program and run with it and uh, that was a cliche you know we used in the industry 
much ahead of that we used to pick up two three good people and say them okay you will bear the entire load or the stress of the program because now it's a do or die situation that's what we call firefighting and we were not in the days where we had a lot of team autonomy and you know the leadership aptitude was also not towards servant leadership it was more hierarchical and in such an environment you know when you are having a struggle of your personal situation where you want to end your day on the right time you know the evening time because you have to care for your younger kid uh, who you, we, for whom also you have a priority and you want to put your food down but at the same time you understand your personal uh, you know difference between your professional obligation and how it is going to impact if you don't speak up so i made an attempt i i thought a lot you know i was thinking that it's like either i leave the whole thing and say that i cannot manage this program i want to be i had a internal dialogue continuously for many days that should i leave the program because it is much demanding me to be you know taking a, a stand till 10 o'clock in the office because uh, it was a japanese customer and they were too much micromanaging also so we had to actually run the show from morning 9 am till night 9 pm 10 pm and uh, even the customers would be on top of it and my team had to actually you know uh, also solve incidents live reporting a lot of things and in such scenario i you know it's not a right fit program for me as a uh, you know as a mother of a newborn it was not the right decision probably by my management to put me in a firefighting mode where the customer trust was down but then i took the middle ground i made sure that i uh, you know uh, share my vulnerability with my Uh, senior management i say them that yes you know there is a boundary which i will need to keep while i can still perform for the 8 to 9 hours from the morning to the evening but i would need an extra hand post 6 pm 5:30 pm so that you know we both together so you might have to add a capacity to support me during the you know late hours where you know i can still use and then it was a totally different perspective which my management gave me you know i built that vulnerability with them i was not sure whether they would remove me from that program or they would still want to keep me but the sheer fact that i was explaining this and the sheer fact that they still wanted me on that program they told me a very different out of the box thinking they said no problem we are going to add a project lead who can support you for the you know later part of the day we want you to more focus on the strategizing of how this relationship can be back on bought by back on track how we can build the customer trust that is where your usp is and we want you to focus on that while the operational activities you know we will segregate the capacity in such a way that your operational activities or the you know team uh, management post the evening hours can be done by someone else or even during the daytime but you focus on how the strategic components of this program are going to move and it was it was a eye opener for me that day that once you know what are your strengths once you know what are your vulnerabilities and you are open to share them there can be solutions which are found otherwise if you start assuming uh, certain things for yourself then you are actually limiting your own potential so and from that day actually i realized that i can be in a win win situation so that is how i have also modeled my entire professional career to always see a win win and negotiate a win win situation never a lose lose and whenever i see a situation where i have a win lose lose win or lose lose combination i try to you know bring that perspective to whichever stakeholders i am dealing with and the same uh, i applied try applying it with my management also vulnerability has always worked in my favor yes sometimes people take advantage you know you you have a risk to fail as she as brene pointed out you know there are no guarantees you can fail but you can also fly so it's like this butterfly you know you can actually break from the chrysalis or you can die within that it's up to you it's up to your environment also but it's good to take that chance uh, and not remain the caterpillar so this is something which i really wanted to share as a personal journey and uh, just uh, you know uh, i'm going to also ask you yours so be you know be with me on that but just to take a pause and see what are the reflections any stories on that so i have a real story but what i would like to do is i would like to first move to your story and uh, there is a reason why this image is this way but uh, any anything which you would like to share 
as your vulnerability journey or story or anything a short component of how you have brought this to life or your team has brought this to life or any experience i'm sorry i'm continuously trying to bring you out of your comfort zone and not allowing you to just listen but yeah that is the way i would be using this intervention today this is aditi again i would say uh, i can resonate with your story uh, because being a woman uh, being with, with the kids it's the same story where where the work is always demanding and it's the guilt is always around you so you have to take a call and yes i too did number of times where i go back and told uh, to my serious that this is where i'm ending this is what i can do okay. so it worked for me in a way exactly. and it's it, i'm i'm seeing my growth path it's building up and it's it's not been taken as a anything bad or anything incorrect i'm doing in my journey so uh, i can very well resonate with this same story fantastic aditi thanks for sharing that any anything else and um, inviting someone who has not spoken uh, please feel free please feel vulnerable to share we are all in a small group and if you wish we can stop the recording also but be open about it so hi juhi this is rushali uh, mm-hmm. i had a similar story as you shared uh, being in this it industry uh, working mother nuclear family is a challenging definitely right and being vulnerable uh, and sharing the uh, the kind of challenges you are facing uh, that really makes the journey easier so i totally agree with you uh, in my earlier days um, at that time it was a maternity leave of 4 months only 3 months and plus 1 month right so uh, okay. that was the case for me as well uh, when i joined i had a assumption in my mind as my company was small uh, there was uh, there were no work from home available and uh, i had a assumption in my mind that i need to go back to work or either leave my career and that's where i discussed this with my manager very openly that uh, uh, i'm in nuclear family and uh, as my uh, kid is just a few months uh, it will be very difficult for me to continue my uh, journey uh, in this it world and i'm i'm thinking to take a break a small break for some time uh, and that's where he came up with uh, 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 option that i can work from home and i was the first case in my entire company to start working from home and as you mentioned um he he himself mentioned that for me um he appreciate the focus i have in my work and and kind of dedication i have and that's where he was open to try this out and uh, uh, and try this to uh, see how it works and and that really started this option for uh, uh, working mothers into our, our that it firm so that i was the first case and after me Uh, it was like open for others as well and uh, they felt like uh, uh, returning mothers are even uh, capable enough to do more work as well as because um, uh, they have uh, when they work upon their challenges and then when they come back to their uh, professional uh, work they are focused there they want to complete that as uh, 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 this kind of uh, option given by the company they want to give 110% uh, to the company as well so that's where uh, it's not only for me uh, it was beneficial but after me there were like many uh, other teammates as well who got such kind of chance so yes. so yes uh, being this is such a beautiful then, story thanks rushali for sharing this indeed and you know you always inhibit we always take assumptions and inhibitions that you know something may not work out but what as i said what if i uh, it may fail but what if we fly and you not only uh, you know had this for you but you also made others fly so that's that's a very very beautiful uh, and uh, inspirational aspect of your story thank you so much vrushali for bringing and uh, from the men community also i'm definitely sure you know that is how we are built you know if you see even in this call today you know it's very easy for the and it's also a gender thing sometimes you know uh, as r- rightly kartik called out that you know it's easy to cry 
because you know we are stereotype that women can cry they can share their feelings they are more emotional so they are open to vulnerability but maybe men are more you know they have to be more stronger they cannot share their emotions so fast and so easily so i i could actually you know see that some component of it when you know the women started speaking up because it started resonating with that the, them faster but if there is someone who wants to really share his story uh, please please feel free to share it may be also possible you know that we have don't we have not utilized the vulnerability mirror as i call it you know we normally don't think on these lines so i i am i'm not blaming you if you don't have a story it means that you have maybe have not thought about it there could be some which you have gone through and uh, you may not have actually felt that they were your stories so uh, you know it's not required that you tell it to me or everyone on the call here but go back and reflect on your stories and that's how you are going to build your own courage and it's that's the more take away we we need for this it, it's not required that you share it up front here but for yourself you should be convinced that you know you have this dots connected um, uh, you know for your stories so i also wanted to really share a real time story a very interesting corporate scenario which happened and it was a very interesting conversation over a lunch table which my customer uh, stakeholder who happens to be a uh, Uh, you know a line of business cio for one of the banking uh, uh, organization we were having lunch on the table and he was visiting this uh, you know uh, service uh, odc which we have in cognizant and interestingly uh, this gentleman said me you know how you know why how we choose partners or how you know partners typically are chosen uh you know uh, there is a very beautiful uh, story i want i on uh, remember and then i was very curious and i asked him what's that story and he said there was once a organization a you know service partner who was actually we were having a a particular portal which was serviced by that uh, service partner and uh, what happened is there was couple of you know in fact one engineer who was imp uh, importantly responsible for one module it was a online shopping portal and it was uh, on a very festive uh, uh, timeline this portal was actually uh not working because people had to go do online shopping and uh, this uh, window was very important for that customer because uh, i'm not talking about this banking customer he was giving me another example of a retail customer so uh, this window of uh, online shopping was very important for them and suddenly the online shopping the shopping cart module went down and uh, now it is natural that people cannot add to cart and they cannot check out and they cannot actually buy the product now for this they had the incident it was of course a p1 major and the engineer who actually was responsible went missing and uh, they had to actually set up a war room and the partner uh, management also became a part of this war room uh, the customer uh, senior folks got involved because it was a very critical uh, error and uh, there was a direct impact on the revenue uh, so what happened they finally over the weekend resolved this you know but the the person who was responsible for the coding and uh, the owner of the module was not there and he he belonged to the service partners organization not to the customer organization but while the other members chipped in and of course there was you know some amount of documentation around it and they could fix it but naturally since the owner was missing it took a little time and there was definitely a revenue loss which happened now after they started doing a root cause analysis not of the bug but why this happened you know what happened to this engineer was he critically ill was he out of station and then they realized that you know the service partner also tried to dwell when they realized that the engineer was there but he was quite uh, you know uh, not there on the scene now he was not there on the scene and there was a reason and i want to ask you now you to connect the dots and the, then the customer also after this tried to put things in perspective and uh, said to the service line partner that we will need to actually uh, relook at your contract as a partner so what do you think is the reason of um the this customer saying to the service con partner that we will need to relook at your contract what do you think could be the reason
there are some Murphy. clues and pictures on the screen but yes want to hear from you they were feel feeling left down let down by the service partner not taking responsibility or accountability for the no the service partner uh, entire leadership you know the was completely from the account management even to the vertical management everyone was on the ground on the war room so responsibility was fully taken the only component was the owner of the module was missing uh, so if i can say ji uh, uh, by looking at the pictures it appears that the uh, customer uh, the team was not uh, comfortable sharing the doubts uh, and they were vulnerable about those and they did not have a trust to, to share the and courage to share the uh, their inputs with whom that's a very interesting point why customer. did the engineer go missing with the customer but why did the engineer go missing he, he could have come and told right that yes this was a mistake and i would fix it and the customer was a very matured uh, organization in fact they are quick, extremely matured organization on this journey and this guy who i'm talking about he was a part of the other organization and he he and he, the very fact that he was telling me this is because he was matured enough to take that understanding Mm -hmm. and the decision why they took to you know relook at the partner contract was based on this fundamental aspect yeah so the I, yeah you you are very near yes but it was not the customer it was uh, the the organization of the engineer so the very okay. fact that that engineer did not turn up you know to openly talk about his mistake maybe he, there was a bug in his code or he he or she did not realize that it would have such a big impact and uh, in the nick of time it went down and you know the blame would have come on him he would have lost his job all of things started kept coming to the mind of the person but yeah. why this happens you know where is the seed of this is the organization of this engineer is not building enough you know trust so that people can come out with their failures so failures are penalized in this organization is what is the experience of this engineer and hence he fled the scene he 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 absconded because it was the easiest way to uh, go away from the problem because if the problem was committed and uh, later maybe he would have had consequences after the bug was fixed that was the fear so the organization ran its you know uh, people on fear is what the customer found out they did some root cause analysis did digging around the partner culture and they realized that this was a but you know this was not a issue restricted to one incident or one engineer it was a larger cultural issue which is related to fear based culture rather than a trust based culture with this organization and that's where so they decided to relook the contract and it is a very intangible thing but yes uh, you know i can always say that you know you are not equipped on the skill to maintain my website but i cannot say that you don't have a trust culture right how do you actually uh, an intangible thing like that how you can uh, so they said that we have to relook then they very intelligently started asking certain questions to the partner in the way they respond to the you know customer satisfaction aspect of it or you know the partner selection they had a very creative way of asking questions on the leadership styles of the team and the environment and culture of the engineers the way they are treated and then they found out that this was the gap so this is a very impactful you know this made a large impact on me when you know i i coach my leaders i always give them this example that it's not as you know the sometimes there are very symptomatic issues the the issue could be really deep down and you don't understand what is you know the real issue you go and fix the symptoms but as a leader you have to also go down a bit and when you go digger down a bit everything comes down to the behavioral aspect so initially it could be skill it could be you know lot of things like when you see people leaving the organization the attrition you know the industry is facing so much attrition now so when we are coaching leaders on you know how to manage attrition or how to build more trust with the team so that they don't leave all of it you know is tied up to the way behavioral agility works and it revolves around these topics of trust and courage and the openness and transparency right so this is how you know this what as i said you know how does what does this mean to leaders and teams so most importantly the same trait which we see 
uh, in the uh, millennials as we said and most of our leaders will fall in that bracket you know they will be 40 plus 50 plus leaders and first and foremost they have to you know as simon sinek always tells you you are a human first as a leader and you have to show your vulnerability which is the only way to truly lead so most of our leaders are not vulnerable they want to show that they are really successful they are really you know uh, uh, always have been uh, quite uh, successful as leaders in their journey they don't want to show their failure side they don't want to appeal to the team that they are not sure what is the solution and want to ask the team about what they feel so these are anti patterns to new age leaders and uh, that's where you know the vulnerability plays a very very important role in being truly a leader so any any examples you have seen in your leaders or uh, surround in the surrounding or um, any great examples of you know the leaders we see in the world where you can give an example of a leader being vulnerable and it has worked out in his favor Uh, hi, Jay Vrishali here again. So uh, in yes, our uh, current team, uh, so we had a situation where uh, for uh, one entire sprint, back-to-back uh, uh, -back for two sprints, basically, we were not able to deliver anything which we have thought of. And um, uh, we we definitely did a retro uh, on the first sprint as well, and we came up with few actions. But on the second sprint as well, um, it was like uh, our team was not able to uh, deliver uh, anything. Uh, everything was spilled because of the uh, new. It was a totally a new application, and that's where uh, basically uh, team entirely all the uh, teammates and everyone was so disappointed that when we started when we met for retro uh, and then uh, we have uh, our uh, uh, manager as well who, who who was a reporting manager basically not on the from the scrum team but a reporting manager uh, from the hierarchy perspective so mm -hmm. he too joined and in that discussion we just started with a, a point that let's celebrate our failure so we 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 went ahead. We we did a party on that day that uh, we 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 celebrated our failure. We uh, understood what not went well. Uh, we thought what action can be made. And uh, on on that particular day, the day started with uh, everyone was feeling okay. Whom to pass on the blame to? Right, Correct. and it ended with uh, minds uh, mind thinking of uh, okay. Let's do this together. Whatever. Uh, let it be the condition but let we, we want to do this and we will do this on the next fantastic so, so you leader, the, uh, the leaders took this stand uh, which was really yeah. good yes. fantastic yes definitely you know reflecting on your own failures and using it to your advantage yeah. as a team as a person takes strength and courage you know this is exactly you know how to flip vulnerability into courage so thanks Prishali, for the beautiful example and uh, you know if you see you know the leaders who are very humble you know they are never they will never be shy of uh, expressing their vulnerabilities because they know that unless they come down to that level uh, you know once that they start empathizing you know the team starts empathizing with them if the leader itself himself or herself is uh, the lady is showing that they are you know they can, they can have a can do all attitude then the team does not feel that that connection so vulnerability is the basic aspect of feeling connected also if you see and that's how the teamwork also begins you know the trust begins so you can when you can relate to a person when you know that the way you are vulnerable you are you know not full of perfection someone else who is next to you or someone else who is higher in hierarchy to you are also you know connected to you on a similar level then you can start you know connecting with them otherwise you will always feel that they are far-fetched you know you have a benchmark they always try to become a benchmark for you you will never have a connection with them they will always stand apart from you so that is how you know leaders are also changing and i would say i have seen this change in leadership style also when you are a, a you know power-based leader versus when you are an empowerment-based leader this attitude definitely changes when you want to empower the team with the decision you can 
actually be very open about you know we have a very recent example where you know we have our leaders coming to us and saying yes we don't know the way can we take your inputs and recommendations to the you know way ahead and this is happening in organizations and then the fee people start feeling empowered because their decision their recommendations are getting considered so thanks any any other example i think we are closing on the time so but mostly yeah, we have just, covered just a couple of points uh i think uh, this particular example what i think vaishali was saying is really great but the reality what i see on the ground is a bit different right because mostly the leaders uh, you know fall in the majority of the population in the leadership level right c suit or cxos uh, they want to take a credit when there is a win and they want to look at person whom they can pass the bug when there is something is not going good and this is what the majority of the leaders are into right i'm not generalizing but this is what i see around but things have slowly started changing right Correct. but the, but the the all it all boils down to the vision and the, and the conviction of the leader i i strongly believe a vision is very important for the leader and how he has to carry himself the gravitas the communication the appearance of an executive leadership as very important and it is it is is call or her call to see how they want to behave if they want to look at a broader objective all this what we are discussing come into place if they are looking at narrow things personal gains yes i agree tactical tactical things mostly leaders what i see today's world of course i'm not generalizing again but i with what or i i'm seeing they are all tactical than strategical i agree right I agree. so yes. that if you do that then of course there are short short term gains but uh, high less probability of having a long term yes. gain you they might not they might not end up having the same set of teams the teams would leave them eventually because no the leaders will they, also leave <laughs> so yeah, the leaders will leave to new uh, t, uh, new, newer fields right. because it's only about personal gains so you know they will thrive on moving from one area to other because they want to you know change context and gain quick brownies yes, i have seen you, such leaders definitely yeah if we see a leader who is reluctant to resolving problems which they are already aware of all leaders are aware of problems i will not agree, disagree if they don't know they all yes. know but only thing is if they don't lend their ears it means they don't care and uh, they are just looking at the tip of the iceberg that's it correct and as we rightly said you know there is a intangibility associated with this and that's the reason you know behavioral agility is very uh, far uh, you know to my understanding very uh, downplayed in the corporate culture because there is no tangible benefit here right in a personal commitment you know what is the tangible benefit of a trust because you have long term relationships to be built but in a you know in a professional environment uh, you know the behavioral agility while it will generate you must you know more outcomes uh, the tangibility between the outcome and this connect behavioral agility is not very obvious unless you have that mindset to look at it and that's where you know coaches come into play how we influence the leadership how we influence the behavioral changes in our leadership and teams go a long way and of course you need a mature customer also who is just not throwing up the work on the wall and wanting to get the deliverable you know they need to invest time in understanding their teams with whom they are working and if you have such a mature customer or you are fortunate enough to work with one then you can play on these aspects otherwise it's just a very tactical and transactional business as yeah, you rightly yeah. called out and they they also have to move away from utilizing the resources to yeah, right. <laughs> to harnessing to, the people exactly yeah, i think uh, that's how to embrace a, a culture where everybody can survive and thrive correct not only Absolutely. the leader but also let the others survive and thrive and that is very very handful of leaders who go unnoticed if they do this in the majority of the group yeah <laughs> that is, i agree uh, that, is, that is what that, i have that's seen. a hard fact of the matter i agree yes. so the closing thoughts you know speaking up you know i just because we are at the top of the hour speaking up really requires courage but courage is not the lack of fear it's the fear walking so this is a beautiful word which brene uses you know it's fear walking and unless you make your fear walk you know you will know, don't know where you will reach and uh, while the system as you rightly you know we have been discussing it's very transactional tactical 
we shouldn't lose hope you know we should still you know the vulnerability the courage which we build maybe it might not impact the 80% but it will impact that 10% who can also make some change and then uh, you know have that kind of a candle uh, light another candle so if we can influence even a handful of engineers who can you know grow up to become leaders now who are engineers you know th those will be new age leaders right few of those will grow to be leaders the gen z gen uh, c whatever you call them so those are the people you know the young minds who are already there as you said they are already playing into that leadership zone so if we can nourish nurture them at least target them and you know uh, try to build and bring up a new culture as a whole that that's a ray of hope for us you know and to become the biggest strength by sharing our vulnerability and experiencing the true connection when these when they started they start absorbing this um, and relating to it i think the job will become easier for and uh, we do will not need coaches down the line naturally because the leaders and the you know people would have been really matured to take this ahead and trust always re leaps trust you know when you open yourself without the fear of being judged and uh, most importantly a no judgment less environment then you develop trust and while this can be very intangible on a delivery sprint but try this believe me you can impact few and then they can impact few more that is how you know the candles will light so with that i will uh, you know end my uh, uh, intervention discussion and thanks for being very very interactive with me today and uh, that's all i had for today